Hey, look what I got. It's the new camera. So, yes, this is the Insta360 X3. Not one X3, just X3. It is the sequel to the most popular 360 camera ever, probably. This is the latest, greatest, all-in-one 360 action camera, and I've been using it for the past few weeks. Actually, it arrived on my birthday, so thank you, Insta360. This is probably going to be the most popular 360 camera release of this year, so I have gone deep into the features, what it can do, and shot a lot of footage to, uh, yeah, do this review. Pretty much I found this to be the most capable 360 camera I've ever used, and I've pretty much used them all. So I'm gonna give you the good and the bad. This is not sponsored uh, or anything like that. They did send me the camera to use before, but that's it. I do not get paid to do this. But yeah, let's get into it. Let's see what the X3 has to offer. Let's start by looking at just the main specifications. We won't go too deep, but just the main headline features. The X3 features two new half-inch sensors, which are twice as large as the last version. It can shoot 5.7K 360 video at 30 frames per second. It can also shoot 4K at 60 frames per second. Using just a single lens, the X3 can shoot 4K standard video at 30 frames per second. It can also shoot 3.6K at 60 frames per second as well as an ultra-wide FOV plus mode, 170 degree, very wide field of view at 2.7K. The X3 can shoot 8K time-lapse videos and bullet time videos at 4K at 120 frames per second. For photography, we've got 360 photos at 72 megapixels and single lens images at 32 megapixels. You can shoot both standard and HDR photos, however the HDR photos are limited to 18 megapixels. The X3 features three microphones, has a battery life that lasts just over an hour and is waterproof to up to 10 meters without a case. So those are the specs and I'm going to show you in more in detail what they mean and what the camera can do but let's just first look at the design because there have been some welcome changes. So looking at the One X3 it's a kind of candy bar shape. From one side the X3 pretty much looks the same as the uh, previous generation the One X2 but turn the camera around and the difference becomes more clear. The X3 features a 2.29 inch touch screen by far the largest of Insta any of Insta360 cameras allowing the user much more easy control of the camera settings. On one side of the camera you'll find doors holding the battery, micro SD card slot and USB port. On the other side you'll find the power button and a quick menu key for selecting predefined settings. On the front there's both a shutter button and another button for viewing your media. The X3 is slightly bigger and heavier than its predecessor, however it's still small and light enough to fit the action camera category and will be compatible with most action camera accessories. The camera is designed to be fairly rugged with a hardened plastic body and a textured rubber sides for a secure gripping. Two obvious vulnerabilities are the protruding lenses which are easily damaged and you should, should you drop the camera, so be warned if you do damage those lenses you will have to send it away to be repaired and that takes a while and it's expensive. According to Insta360, the X3 is waterproof without a case to 10 meters. However, you need to make sure all the doors are securely closed beforehand. There were some issues with the last version of the camera with it being difficult to keep the camera watertight. But from what I can see, the uh, kind of doors, the kind of hinges that um, secure them have been upgraded to be a lot easier to secure. The X3 feels like a premium product and additions like the large touch screen and even vibration when you turn the camera on on. The added size is uh, barely noticeable and really doesn't affect your shooting and this is definitely a 360 action camera that can last in a variety of environments. Now let's start looking at some video, that's pretty much what we're all here to see, right? The X3 is primarily a 360 action camera and the previous version, probably the most popular 360 action camera ever, so what can the X3 do to surpass it? First and foremost are new sensors. Each of the Insta360 X3's two lenses feature a half inch sensor, which is twice the size of the last generation and larger than those found in nearly all other action cameras 360 or not. These larger sensors allow the camera to capture more light, detail and color. The size and quality of the camera sensor is usually the biggest factor in how well it can shoot video and photos in fact. Having tested the X3 for the past few weeks, I do notice a difference in terms of quality, particularly when shooting in lower light situations. Shooting with the X3 indoors, low light or darker areas results in more dynamic video with less noise than was possible before. Even in perfect lighting conditions, this larger sensors do result in high quality 360 video than I've seen in pretty much all 360 cameras of this size and price. 
So the larger sensors are definitely the biggest hardware upgrade and shouldn't really be overlooked. The maximum resolution of the X3 is once again 5.7K, which is unchanged from the last two versions and pretty much seems to be the limits for 360 action cameras in general. The lack of a boost in resolution is somewhat disappointing, but also somewhat understandable. Insta360 wants to make this camera accessible to the masses, so anything much higher than 5.7K is gonna be difficult for most people's phones or uh, laptops, desktops to be able to edit smoothly and easily. So the more premium Insta360 ONE RS 1 inch edition, which was only released a couple months ago, does shoot 6K 360 video, but that is a much larger camera and not really meant for action shots and really designed for more professional uses. When reframed, the Insta360 X3 video looks pretty decent if, if even if the resolution is the same. You can further boost the quality of your video by using active HDR mode, which allows you to shoot moving HDR video. We can see the difference here between HDR and non-HDR, and you can see there is a difference. So Using this mode will again boost the quality, but yeah, make sure you're in good lighting conditions when you do it. So once again, viewing Insta360 videos on a large screen like your TV or a large laptop, you are going to notice that it doesn't match up to most other videos we shoot with other cameras these, these days. But when viewed on a smaller screen, which less face it, most videos are these days, the uh, reframe video still looks really good. And especially if you edit it, you add a bit more color and um, that kind of stuff, you can get some really high quality footage. And as I've said before, 360 cameras are designed for creativity. They allow you to be super creative, more so than any other kind of camera, but you do have to sacrifice quality, I'm afraid. But I think the payoff is worth it, at least for me. It's up to you whether you care more about sharpness and video quality or the ability to create these kind of amazing shots, which is just not possible with other kind of cameras. Well, of course, I would say that because that's what my channel's all about, but it's up to you, I guess. The X3 utilizes Insta360's flow state stabilization software to keep your footage super smooth. Once again, this is probably the best action camera in general for shooting any kind of moving, moving shots, uh, any kind of moving shots. The X3 is gonna keep everything super, super stable. Really, it seems impossible the way it does it, but it works because 360 cameras just have this ability. And yeah, Insta360 really home in on that and make full use. I mean, I've seen, I mean, I've seen just some crazy, crazy stuff done with these cameras and the, um, yeah, the stabilization just works every time. And these, and there was just no way you could ever get these kinds of shots with any other kind of camera. Despite the standard video being not changed in terms of resolution, you, you can actually shoot time-lapse videos at 8K resolution with the X3. Now that is a big, big upgrade. I don't know any other camera that can do that, especially at this price range, especially at this size. Now that's again due to the new sensors, but these 8K time-lapses I think are really awesome. I'm not gonna, don't sleep on this kind of feature. I think if you wanted to really create some dynamic video, time-lapses are also always awesome just to put into your shots. And these time-lapses are really sharp. I think they're really good. I think this is one of the best reasons to get this camera. I know not Everyone is gonna jump at the chance to be shooting time lapses all the time, but I think it's an awesome feature. Now let's take a look at the single lens mode of this uh, of the X3. Now if you just tap on the um, video options, you'll see there is a single lens mode and that basically allows you to choose either one of the single lenses to shoot standard non-360 normal video, just flat video like you shoot with your phone or with a GoPro or any other kind of action camera. So the maximum resolution of this kind of video is 4K and it's pretty good. I think that kind of matches up to some modern action cameras. Certainly doesn't compete with GoPro Hero 10 or that kind of stuff, but having a 4K action camera pretty much inside a 360 camera is a really, uh, I think it's really good value. It means you can switch between 360 and normal video at the touch of a button and still get really good quality video both times. And bear in mind, you do also get that amazing stabilization that you get with the 360 mode. Pretty much, maybe not quite as good, but pretty much super stable single lens video as well, super stable flat video, and you would not be able to get this kind of stabilization with most phones. For those seeking a higher frame rate for moving video action shots, then you can shoot at 60 frames per second at 3.6K, which I think is pretty reasonable. Single lens mode gives you a range of field of view options, which basically is how widescreen the video appears. Now there is a ultra widescreen option, it's called field of view plus, and uh, yeah, it's 170 degrees ultra widescreen and it works best when the camera is kind of mounted to your chest. You can create first person shots, which I think look really good. And this has been very popular for cyclists 
cyclists, for mountain bikers, for motorcyclists to shoot um, yeah, their rides. And this would be pretty much the perfect camera to do that in. It just is literally one button and you have that option straight away. Now a really new interesting feature um, of the X3 is called Me Mode. Now this is what it looks like and this is all done inside the camera, absolutely no editing required and it doesn't matter how much you wave the camera around, the person shooting is always at the center of the shot. X3 to a invisible selfie stick which is an accessory sold separately and hold the stick close to your body. The end of the selfie stick will always be at the center of the frame so as long as the selfie stick is close to your body you will always be at the center of the frame no matter where you walk, no matter if you're skiing, cycling, skateboarding, as long as that selfie stick is near you you're going to be at the center of the shot. Doesn't require any editing whatsoever and because of that super awesome stabilization it just is a really awesome way to film yourself doing whatever you want to do. It's probably the easiest way to film yourself out of any camera that I've known ever. It beats using a selfie stick and flipping your phone up to have the selfie stick pointing out. At least this time it's invisible. Um, it looks like the camera is floating and focusing on you the whole time. I think the video capabilities of this camera, while it's definitely disappointing that it's stuck still at 5.7K, there's no denying that, but I think all these other little added features are making up for it. I really like the me mode, I really like the 8K time lapse. Um, yeah, the half inch sensors, they don't, it's not like a huge, huge difference, it's like, oh my god, it looks amazing, but it does make a difference, especially if you're gonna film um, in your city in dark, in low light conditions at night time. So they are continuing to innovate and you have to give it to them for that. But moving swiftly on, let's take a look at some photos shot with this camera. Now, all of the Insta360 cameras are pretty much video action cameras first and foremost. People are into shooting 360 photos, there are a lot of Instagrams of people shooting them, so... And for anyone who is into that, the X3 has pretty much uh, got you covered. The new sensors allow the camera to shoot 72 megapixel 360 images. That's crazy! I don't know of any camera that can shoot that high resolution. The, even the professional ones don't shoot that high. So yeah, the, the images are really sharp, uh, they look good, the half inch sensors once again, allowing more light, so increase like better colors, better details, everything basically is better than the previous version. It allows you to zoom into those images uh, so you could crop them out and just select a little bit of the image and you'd still end up with a decent quality photo. It's not as good as like, a professional camera, it's not as good as a DSLR, it's not as good as something with that costs three times as much, even though the resolution may be higher. Um, you could use this for virtual tours, probably, but not ones that you charge thousands for because this is, once again, an all-in-one camera. If you wanted to shoot um, rapid virtual tours uh, many times, if you were like in construction or real estate where you need to shoot lots of virtual tours by yourself, you don't want to hire someone else to do it, this camera would be very good at doing that. It's very quick and easy. You'll also find a HDR mode which combines several exposures together. It does improve the appearance of your uh, photos, but that mode is limited to 18 megapixels, so it's uh, quite a big reduction in terms of sharpness and resolution. And once again, single lens mode is also, option, is also an option for photos. It can shoot 32 megapixel flat normal videos. Um, so yeah, I guess a pretty high resolution selfie you could take with this camera. The, the software used by the X3 hasn't really changed from the last generation, but if you are new to this camera, if this is the first time you've come across this lineup, it uses both a free app and a free desktop software to uh, be able to edit, reframe, turn your 360 videos into um, these awesome free-flowing, point-first, shoot-later, fake drone effects, uh, third-person views, first-person views, all of these awesome effects that 360 cameras are capable of. That's all done in the free software. Now, I'm not gonna go into exactly how to use it in this review because that would literally take another 20 minutes and we don't have the time. But it's all in a tutorials in my channel if you're new. But let me just tell you, not much has changed. There are a few new modes, for example, a photo animator, probably to make use of the higher quality photos. You can automatically, automatically animate your 360 photos. But like I said, if you're new to Insta360 uh, in general, then this, you need to get both of these to um, basically use the camera and to get all the awesome effects that I've shown you. Everything in this video was made using either the app or the desktop studio. And yeah, um, I did not spend much time doing it, to be honest. It's very quite easy. It's really quite easy to get these kind of shots. So let's keep things real. Like the camera is not perfect. Um, I'm not going to pretend that it is. I'm not really not trying to make you buy it or anything. The downsides, I guess, the camera has three microphones, but once again, it's not, you know, studio level quality audio. I mean, it's probably going to be fine for vlogs and just standard normal stuff. But if you wanted anything high quality, you'd need to get an external um, mic adapter. The battery life is also not particularly great. I have noticed it drains quite quickly, I think. 
You could probably get between 45 minutes and an hour of continuous shooting. That's been my experience at, at least. So yeah, it's not great. It's not terrible. Nah. And yeah, it's just these lenses, again, really just uh, worry me. They're again, not replaceable. Uh, you have to really be careful, guys, when using the camera, just make sure whatever you're securing it to is securely attached to whatever accessory. You can do these awesome action stuff, these action videos attached to your bike, surfboard, a kite or for the drone, whatever, but just make sure um, it doesn't fall off because if it does and the lenses are scratched then the camera is basically unusable you have to send it away and it takes a while and it's expensive it would be great if one day we could get removable replaceable lenses because it would just save a lot of time and money so i think that's pretty much it i do not want to make this a you know a the longest video in existence. So I've pretty much given you all I can say about the X3 now. I've been using it for a few weeks and I think that's pretty much all I can say. So yeah, is this the best 360 camera ever? Um, at this price range and for a mass market, then yes, it definitely is. I think the last version was the best of the last generation and this is definitely an upgrade, fairly significant upgrade. The words that come to mind when I think about the Insta360 X3 is creativity, creativity, and creativity. Literally, this is a creative dream. I mean, if you are really into getting these kind of awesome shots, you're really into editing and taking this 360 footage and doing all this crazy stuff with it, then this is the camera for you. If you want to impress people on Instagram and TikTok, you want to create something a little bit different than all of the kind of quite basic stuff that's put on there, let's face it. Unlike most cameras where you have to choose one way of filming and you kind of have to crop, say you post something on Instagram and you also want to put it on TikTok, you kind of have to crop the video so it doesn't look quite as good on one platform and another but with this camera and the editing app or indeed the desktop software this you can you can create videos for TikTok and Instagram and have it perfectly framed in the right format you can do that from the same video so your videos will always look how they're supposed to on the platform so yes, you do have to sacrifice some quality, some video kind of sharpness, which we're used to seeing in things like the GoPro Hero 10. Uh, the last camera, the last version, the One X2 was also awesomely creative, but this just ups the game with these new features. There are cameras out there that can shoot higher quality 360 videos, but they are not action cameras. They don't have the same size. They don't have the same uh, portability. The new half inch sensors, the HDR boost mode, the 8K time-lapse, the 4K bullet time, those are really the things that impress me, like the, the 72 megapixel photos. So it is basically two cameras in one. I know the last version was that as well, but they've really gone away to upgrade the single lens options. That's it, guys. I hope you found that good. I hope you found that useful. And um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions about the camera. I will obviously be using it quite a lot. I'll do some tutorials of how to get the best out of all of the new modes and how to get the best shots possible. So if you're interested in any of that, please uh, like this video and subscribe and check out all the links in the description where you can get the camera and where you can see some other videos that are useful. Uh, yeah, that's it, guys. See ya. Bye.